All right, we are in lesson 4.2 today, and I am going to split this up into two videos again. Uh, should be pretty short videos all together, so let's get started with it. We're going to first talk about applying congruence. So let's talk about the uh, term congruent figures. Okay, congruent figures are figures where corresponding parts... Okay, now we've used that word corresponding before. Uh, we had corresponding angles postulate, and it actually has the same meaning here, but we'll talk about it a little bit more in just a second. Figures where corresponding parts are congruent. Corresponding has the idea of being in the same position as something else. All right, now, what parts are we talking about? Well, we're going to start with triangles, quadrilaterals, things like that. So, in this case, the parts we're talking about are either angles or they are sides. Okay, if we get into three-dimensional figures, we might talk about faces that are congruent. Okay, but for right now, we're just talking polygons, so we're talking angles and sides. All right? um, now, the definition of congruent makes us have every single set of sides and every single set of angles be congruent. Now, the nice thing is we're going to learn some shortcuts later on, especially for triangles, that will shorten our work up by about half. But for right now, and this is very important, for now, if you are asked to prove that something is congruent, you have to make sure you have every single set of sides congruent and every single set of angles congruent. Okay? All sets of sides are congruent. All sets of angles. When we say sets, that's what we're talking about is those corresponding sets. Okay, so that's important that you have these two things by the definition of congruent figures. Like I said, later on we're going to learn some shortcuts and that will cut our work in half. Okay, but that won't be for a couple more lessons. Alright, let's look at a, what's called a congruence statement. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see these triangles at the same time. Um, just a little bit more, get that letter in there, letter Y. Okay, so a congruence statement. Now if you look at our triangles, um, we have an M and an N and an O, and we can name this triangle in any order we want. And we can name this triangle in any order we want, but when we say they're congruent, then we have to be careful. So we can name this or triangle in any order we want, so I'm just going to say triangle M, O, N. Now, you notice that M has three marks on it, three marks on this angle. Over here, W, if I zoom back in a little tighter now, okay, W has three marks on it. Okay, see that? We got one mark on this side, one mark on this side. Two and two on the angles, three and three on the sides, one and one on the angles, and then two and two on the sides. So we've got all the pieces congruent. That's what we were talking about up here. All sets of sides are congruent, all sets of angles are congruent. So one set of sides, second set of sides, third set of sides. One set of angles, second set of angles, third set of angles. Okay? Now, if I name this triangle as M-O-N, you have to match the order up correctly over here. So we would have to say W-Y-X. So triangle M-O-N is congruent to triangle W-Y-X. Now I want you to try something. What if I said this? What if I said triangle N-M-O is congruent to triangle? What would that have to be if we went N-M-O? So look at the order here. N-M-O... What would you have to say to make sure you match it up correctly? You'd have to say X, W, Y. N and X go together. So if N is first, then X has to go first. M and W go together. They're the same measurement. They're congruent. So if M is second, then W has to be second. And Y has to be last. Okay? That's what this whole idea here is. The order is important. Okay? Order is very important. Now, if I tell you this, and I don't even give you a picture, you can still tell me which sides are congruent. So what would be one side of triangle ABC? One side would have to be side AB, right? What would be another side? BC. What would be another side? When we did AB, we did BC, well, we would have to have AC. Now, without even looking at a picture, knowing that order is important, what would AB have to be congruent to? Well, look where AB is located. It's the first and the second letters. 
So what do you think it's going to be congruent to? It's going to be congruent to PS. And what is BC going to be congruent to? Now it's going to be congruent to SK. And AC is going to be congruent to PK. All right, well, what about the angles? Remember, way back here, all sets of sides are congruent. We just did that. Triangle has three sets of sides. All sets of angles are congruent, so we have to have three angles now. So angle A is congruent to angle what? Well, obviously, P. They're in the same position. And we're corresponding in the same position. Angle B would be congruent to angle S. And angle C would be congruent to angle K. It's a really bad congruent sign, sorry. There we go. Now, if someone chose to use three letters to name one of the angles, that's fine. I'm not going to do that for every single one. But if someone said angle C, B, A is congruent to. All right, well, C is last. So we put K. B is in the middle. So we put S. A is in the front, so we put P. Now, remember, though, that the order we write an angle in doesn't really matter as long as the vertex letter is in the middle. So this angle B, that's another way to say this, if we just use one letter, so use the vertex, is congruent to angle S. That's what we already said here. Or we could actually say angle CBA is congruent to angle PSK. Now, I know that the C and the P don't match up here. Okay, but remember, the order of an angle, as long as you get the vertex in the middle, you can flip these two letters around and it's still okay. I wouldn't recommend doing this because then you might start thinking you can get away with flipping you know, um, A and P around at any time, and you can't do that. You might think that, well, since C is here and P is here, they have to be congruent, but that's not true. Okay, So I wouldn't recommend it, but it is okay to do this. All right? Let's look at the other thing in this, lesson, in this part of the lesson, this first video. Okay, so... Now, we're going to apply algebra to these congruent figures. So copy this picture down. I'm not going to wait for you to copy it all down. All right? So you need to copy it down. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit after uh, you get some of this copied down. But we're going to apply algebra to congruent figure. This is shape DEFG. Now, we don't have a, a symbol like we had for a triangle out front. DEFG is a quadrilateral. There's no symbol for a quadrilateral. All you do is write the four letters in order on the outside is congruent to SPQR, so we do the same thing here. All right. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oh, wrong way. Maybe that's a little too far. There we go. Okay, so this is a 102 degree angle, 84 degrees, 68 degrees, 12, 10, and 9, 2x minus 4, and 6y plus x. So copy that down, and then we're going to solve. All right, here we go. So, let's start with this 2x minus 4. We really don't want to do y and x at the same time, so let's solve for x first. Now, you'll notice that this 2x minus 4 is on side qr. So, what is side qr congruent to? Well, we look right here and we see qr. It's the last two letters. So, over here, the last two letters are fg. So, it has to match up with this fg, this 12. So, 2x minus 4 has to equal 12. What about the 9 and the 10? Why are they there? To confuse you. Maybe you write down 2x minus 4 equals 10. Or 2x minus 4 equals 9 because they're both at the top. Okay, that means you're not paying attention to the order. All right? So we pay attention to the order. We get this equation. Let's solve it. It's a pretty easy one to solve. 2x equals 16 divided by 2 and x equals 8. I think those 2s actually look like 2s. Okay. Now, since it already has feet up here, I don't have to put a label on it. So x equals 8. Now, that means this x is also 8. All right. So let's use that as we move here. So this is angle Q. Angle Q matches up with angle F. So which one's F? Right there, 68. Well, what about the 84 and the 102? Why are they there? To confuse you. Okay. Well, this is a top left, so I make it equal to that. No. This shape has been kind of spun around, all right? It matches up with this one, all right? So angle Q matches with angle F, so 6Y plus X has to equal 68. But remember, we already solved for X, right? So that's why I put an 8 in here, 
Okay, I didn't write 6y plus x, I put the 8 in for the x. So minus the 8, 6y equals 60, divide by the 6, and we get y equals 10. Now since the degrees is already out here, I don't really need it either, so I can just leave my numbers. All right, All right I want you to do this one. Okay, so angle JKL is congruent to angle UVW. We have L, J, and K here. We have a 3Y, 2X plus 8, a 58, a 62, a W, a V, and a U, and a 72 and a 75. So go ahead, pause, copy it down, solve it, and then come back and check your answers. All right, you should have paused and checked your answer or uh, done the work. So now you can watch and see if you did it right. All right, I'm going to start with the Y. All right, Y is, this 3Y is on the LK side. So I see LK, it's the last two letters. So I know it's got to match up with VW. It's not this one. Well, but it's on the right here. So isn't it on the right there? Not necessarily. Maybe this triangle has been spun around as I tried to match it up over here. So, and actually I have this drawn wrong. Um, this is, I, I didn't label this one. This is supposed to be 73.5. Sorry about that. Add that in there real quick. I probably completely and utterly confused you. That's supposed to be a 73.5. I didn't make it look like a 73.5 either. All right. So once again, now pause. All right. Okay, hopefully you went back and redid it. If you were confused last time, I completely understand. Sorry about that. So 3y has to equal 73.5. Okay, LK has to can be congruent to VW. All right, we divide by 3, and we get y equals 24.5. Now, there's no labels on this, so I'm going to put units because it's a length. All right, All right well, what about angle J here? This one you shouldn't have been as confused on. Sorry about the last one. All right, 2x plus 8. Well, j has to match up with u. Well, I don't know u. Well, unlike before, I don't have to tell you this one. All right, you can figure this out because we learned in a previous lesson, lesson 4.1, that all three angles in a triangle have to add to equal what? They have to add to equal 180. So 62 plus 58, we add that up, we get 120. 180 minus that 120 leaves me with 60 degrees for angle U. U matches with J, so 2X plus 8 has to match with this 60. Okay, remember the 60 goes right here. So 2X plus 8 has to equal 60. Now we can solve. 2X equals 52. Divide by that 2 and x equals 26. Now I'm not going to put units on this, it's not a length, and I already have a degree symbol right here with the x. All right, That's the end of the first video for lesson 4.2. Make sure you watch both of them though. All right.